something that they have done in the past. Even, you know, notably against SCT, they drafted the exact same lineups after a lost game. But I do think that they're going to want to make some changes. Swain already taken off the table. Yeah. Swain was hugely problematic. Keen uh, did the highest damage in the game by quite a lot. And he was always a massive threat to their squishies. He was still, like just doing so much damage, really. He was so, so problematic for them throughout this game. And I'd be interested to see if they are going to leave a Fizz as well. They may not have felt it was the biggest problem, but you know, Ray was obviously a huge problem himself. Yeah, Trundle and Fizz were the champions, and Echo were, were the ones that Ray's been playing so far. And yeah, as they, they progressively get banned and picked away, he just goes to the next one. So I don't know if you can get rid of all of them. So Fizz off the table, they say, you know what, just play a a more trackable frontliner. Like, you can do all your damage as Trundle, that's fine, but as long as we can watch you, maybe it's okay for us. Now, CLG hoping that they can. Fizz off the table, leaving everything else up for the man. Vladimir banned, not a big surprise. And this does leave Lucian up that Apollo had banned before. Kindred, Kindred as Kindred. well. Yeah. Which I think is probably going to be the pick, because Kindred is kind of, you know, that S-tier jungler along with Nidalee. Those are considered the top two. And generally speaking, if you can get one without your opponent getting the other, it, it's it's pretty, pretty nice. Obviously, uh, CLG did give it up last time. They gave over that Nidalee, and they did uh, end up paying for it. So we'll see if, in the reverse situation, CLG will want to take that S-tier jungler as well. We'll see if they do 30 seconds still to deliberate what that champion should be. We've got a lot of room to work with, certainly. Victor and Azir also up there as high-profile bid leaders to go for. I don't think they'd be first picked by any means, but if you look at the bands, those might be the ones next up on the table. Yeah, I mean, I could see Echo, perhaps. I could see Kinda, that Kindred, yeah. but I, I really feel like it's going to be Kindred. That, that's what I would I definitely expect, but Lucian? is going to come through. So that does mean they're going to give over quite a doozy of a second and third pick here to Apex, who can take away Echo, who can take away Kindred, who could take away yep. you know, Victor, uh, these sort of champions. And it's looking like Echo and Kindred, which is such a powerful uh, red side first draft. Yeah, it's kind of what we expected to be, that, that triumvirate in the top of the table for pick order. And I think Lucian is still a worthy first pick, honestly. I think he's a very, yeah. very strong champion. Uh, everyone kind of realized that after Black Cleaver got buffed, the whole armor pen build turns out to be very effective on him. It does mean he's more of a mid-game spiking champion. It means his late game's not really that good. He falls off, actually, if you uh, kind of look at his performances. But Lucian is something they can abuse. It's obviously incredibly powerful, but it's not really played out as well for teams in the North American LCS. Not that he's been losing every game, but in the games that I've been seeing, even when it does get ahead, even when it has a lot of kills, it hasn't really been putting out the kind of impressive damage numbers, and it hasn't really been separating itself from the other AD carries, at least in these sample of games, yeah. as much as I feel Kindred does from the rest of the other junglers and so on and so forth. We've seen good games from Ezreal's and Kaelin's and Sivir's, right? Whereas I yeah. feel like Kindred is a step above, uh, you know, your Rek'Sai and okay. your, your, your so on. I, I feel you in that one. It might mean the Rek'Sai or the Elise, actually, is what's going to come through now for a Smithy. Wanted to go for that cocoon and hope you can stun her out and kill her before she can, or they, I suppose, before they can cast Lambs Respite. Karma also grabbed up here, so not going for the bar, but going for the Karma here. Looking to grab that as a flex between mid and support, but most likely support. Karma Lucian definitely an aggressive duel lane if it does come down to that. Very, very aggressive. We didn't see last game, CLG did not get that 2v2. That may be something that they're going to try to hunt down this time around as Lucian Karma is, is pretty devastating in that matchup really against any 2v2. Yeah, it's one of the very best. It's hard to think of any that would be a disadvantageous matchup. Obviously, Caitlyn is a yeah. very good early game. Caitlyn Zyra super long range. Yeah, Caitlyn Zyra. I could see, you know, Caitlyn Nami or Shauna, things like that could be pretty powerful as well, but um, can be tough. Have to bring out the Sona, man. That's how you win every lane. Caitlyn is going to be picked true. up here for Apollo. You know, showing that CLG had picked the Caitlyn up early, but now it means Alistair is through, and Caitlyn, Alistair, definitely engage tools are here for Expecial and Apollo. Has had a great Caitlyn game already this week. Just yesterday against Energy, it was very solid. Had the highest damage in the game. When he played the champion, CLG wanted to pick it away from him in game one, but now with Lucian grabbed up for Stick Say, Caitlyn does fall through. Apex still waiting to pick their mid lane champion until they ensure who he's going to be playing in that matchup. Mm -hmm. We also now have to find out what the top lane pick here is going to be for Darshan. Will he go to the Trundle? Uh, which has been something that's it's very, very strong in these 1v1, something he likes to play. We also saw him play Fiora before. That didn't really work out for him. We have seen some of these more DPS-heavy top laners. Obviously, Maokai is still available if he wants to go the tank route. A lot of options here. But with 
the Alistar having been locked in, uh, we do know that the 2v2 is probably not something that Apex is going to want to go into, and it's going to be Trundle and TF. Okay, so a fighter in the top lane for Darshan, so I'm going to stand up for that matchup and deal with him there. No Maokai, no Poppy, none of the really hard tanks. It's going to be a fighter up there. And yeah, Twisted Fate in the mid lane here. I'm trying to think of other ways they could do it, like Karma Top, TF mid, Trundle support. I, I doubt that highly. TF mid here for who he is going to be nice. I, I like seeing the champion come out. I know he's good at it. And it gives CLG a lot of backline pressure. You know, TF and Elise can try to really reach that. I also feel that this is kind of a, TF, uh, a CLG classic because it sets you up very well for a 1-3-1. Trundle is a fantastic split pusher. TF is as well. You have the ability to collapse, uh, especially if, if we see who he decides to go TP TF. You have a lot of map movement, uh, but even just collapses on anyone who's out of position with that TF ultimate is very, very powerful. It speaks to a lot of the strengths that CLG has. And as far as a three-man squad, you have Karma for the speed ups and the disengage. You have Culling for wave clear. Um, Xmithy as well It has some decent disengage. So as a three-man squad in the mid, it's going to be hard to engage on them. And so Apex trying to head them off at the pass and just match up with all these situations. You've got a Cassidy now to split push against who he's twisted fate. And that's supposed to be a pretty good match for Cassidy. And once you get into the mid game and you get a few items, you get out of the laning phase here. And Apex's siege potential, Kindred, Caitlyn, and Alistair, like that's all you really want in a three-man squad to knock some turrets down and put the pressure back on CLG. So I think Apex have a pretty good lineup for themselves to try to head off what CLG would do to them. Maybe when you dive the back line, maybe a Lambda Spike keeps you alive anyway. I certainly think that Apex has a better team fighting squad on paper here. I think that CLG is going to have to spread out the map. They're going to have to get picks with TF. They're going to have to get that top lane advantage with Darshan if they want to be able to uh, take this game because I really just do not expect late game, you know, at least to be able to stand up to the power of the Kindred in the team fighting. And I think that Cassidy just becomes an absolute team fight monster. Uh, later in the game, so yeah. it, it's definitely going to be tough for them if it does get there. I think Karma falls off as well, but CLG has the tools that they need to be able to, to do this, to crack open the map and to, to look through the wins, through these picks, through the split pushing. Okay, so to CLG to use the tools well and Apex to hold on, maybe blunt them a bit and win the team fights. You guys at home, let us know who it's going to be that wins that one and gets their job done. Hashtag CLG winner, hashtag APX win to at Sports on Twitter. Let us know who it's going to be. Apex took that game one in a 56-minute match. It was a great one to watch. Again, I recommend you go and see that after this match is done if you did miss that one. But here we go, game two. Apex looking to make it a 4-0 start for the North American LCS and CLG hoping to stop their slide. Yeah, these teams have had complete opposite fates so far in the LCS. Uh, Apex has won three straight. CLG has lost three straight. Uh, CLG definitely does not want to start 2-0, uh, like, or 0-2, rather, yeah. in, in their series score. And they are looking to get some deep boards down here, uh, pushing up towards the top side. And here we're going to see them move up forward. CLG looking for one of their more cheeky invades, trying to get through the fog. Shrimp, I like that, pops the W. Does like 100 damage. Drops the trinket. Oh, but the trinket ward has dropped too late, and CLG still get to knock it down. Ten gold to Xmithy. That's even a better early game than last time, where Afro had eight gold. Fantastic. Shout there out to you 5 go. That extra two gold. That's what they needed. The deep wards, though, are going to be answered here by Apollo and X Special. So, uh, tit for tat, and CLG is going to try to hunt down this 2v2 lane. We'll see if they can do it. I definitely think they would love to have standard lanes. Trundle, very good into the Echo, and with the range support, very heavy poke, they're going to like that 2v2 as well. So interestingly, both top lane are switching back to Grasp of the Undying, and I'm a little bit surprised that Keen is doing Deathfire Touch and not Thunderlords on Cassidy, and I figured if yeah. you wanted to like one-shot wow. somebody, you just want that, but it does mean his Q is going to apply the full duration burn, then it means he's got that as a poke skill as time goes on and he gets ability power. Yeah, it's not something I, I mean, I, not that I've seen a ton of cast in recently, mm -hmm. so maybe this is more common Standard. than I think. Yeah. But I definitely would have expected to see uh, the Thunderlords. I've also actually seen Storm Raider Surge on cast in, uh, which, is, yeah. which is actually kind of neat because, you know, your first little enter with your combo where you do the all EQ UE uh, allows you to get the, the move speed pretty much every time. You can get in there, bob them with the W as well. You can kind of chase people down, move in and out. So, Ooh, that nice. might work out pretty well. Small blue piece taken actually by Afro, so he actually leeches part oh. of the camp. Shrimp, of course, still level two. He's going to be fine. Afro does not take any more of that, but he did leech at least a little bit here. Then got some damage and got his golden come across in this one. Shrimp and Ray still just farming. Afro trying to stop that. Looks like he will not quite get any of these wolves just yet. Looking for this, the big one. Dangerously close. Afro does not get any major counter jungling done. 
really close, but he still picks up one CS. And Shrimp would be up, three if not for that. Yeah, and, and he also got uh, 50 gold off of his spell thieves with the ambient plus uh, the proc. So he's doing pretty well for himself with that. Uh, definitely being very annoying, making use of, of as much as he can. And, mm -hmm. you know, meanwhile, Darshan making the same play as last time. He goes, he tries to pick up as much CS as he can. He runs straight the lane, pushes it, picks up four CS, gets some XP, level two. And now he's going to be able to move around and even do a little bit of buddy jungling with his buddy Smithy before he probably heads over to bot lane. Yeah, and... And CLG being able to take, what, a couple of camps away. Yeah. I mean, look at this. This, this. this is not their side of the jungle. CLG doesn't really get to lay claim to this, though. Similarly, I guess Apex shouldn't have laid claim to the Eastern jungle, and they got three camps there anyway. So uh, both teams getting away with uh, aggressive, you could say, greedy starts, but they are paying off quite heavily. I think this is really cool, though, that Darshan is doing this. He's investing the TP to get the extra XP, the extra CS. It's just a little bit of advantage that he snuck out both games. And I think it's something that uh, more players could make the adaptation on. It also does kind of put them a little bit ahead as far as the turret pushing speed because he has his Q and his W, he gets that bonus attack speed. So it's pretty nice. And it's something that did help to carve out an advantage for him last game against Ray. We'll see if he's able to do the same thing again here for himself. And I want to see what the counter logic gaming choices are because even though they were faster in the lane swap, they did not choose to play for the Infernal Drake. Instead, they want to go back into the lane really, really quickly. Darshan building a freeze right now. CLG are very focused on minion farm. Oh, Apollo's got to be careful. The Gromp doing some damage. He burns Summoner Heal. And now Smithy has actually popped Repel to get away. He flashes over, but a flash. Knock up by Expansion. Looking for the kill. They're not quite going to get it. Look how low Alistair is. The first blood comes through for Counter Logic Gaming. He had no way out. And a gold card lands onto Apollo, who's missing Summoners as well. But CLG getting the first blood, punishing the, the jungle take from Apex. Yeah, so close there. Uh, Smithy actually was one shot away from that uh, proc of the E from Kendra, which would have been a guaranteed first blood. He went pretty over aggressive, honestly. Uh, kind of a bit of a mistake there, uh, running forward into that level four Kindred. Uh, but he flashes over, and that kind of baited X, uh, X Special into that engage, and he's able to get taken out by the Lucian, exactly who you'd want that early game gold on. Yeah. Fantastic start here from Stixay, and here comes Smithy, and he got the flash, but he wants to commit, and he realized, whoops, I'm not gonna win this. Tries to get out of there. Very, very low. The Karma Shield saving him as well. Special gets finished off by Stixay. Yeah. Summoner heal by Stixay helping on top of that one, yeah. And yeah, especially with Flash with the Pulverize, just had no way out anymore. Well, as it stands, Counter Logic Gaming are ahead. And the whole time, by the way, Darshan had been freezing 14 minion kills to the two right now of Ray. And well, Ray is leeching experience, but not really getting many last hits here, stuck under the turret. But Shrimp is helping him, which means this turret's gonna stay alive a bit longer. Yeah. As Shrimp makes it a two on two. I think Smithy should be able to head over to bot lane, and, and Darshan is level three. He's not going to be able to get Dove um, by a special and Apollo, especially because they know that all the summoners between these two guys are on cooldown. So Darshan's able to actually just happily farm away. He's going to get not only all the XP, he's going to get all the CS. At least a lot of it. Yeah, it looks like only Apollo's left around to do anything. It's going to be special running around and warding and making sure his teammate stays safe in this side of the map. Darshan's slightly missing an auto attack reset. He's going to be okay, though. 1,200 gold lead right now for Counter Logic Gaming. Yeah, you know, not the worst thing in the world, but that should be 23. I know, Darshan. I saw that. So, meanwhile, CS advantage as well for Huhi, even though he was the one that rotated when Keen did not. Mm -hmm. uh, so, a nice little advantage there for himself. He's level 6. They got to be careful. That first TF ultimate can be a big one. And he is level 6 already. Shrimp gets a mark. Kindred right now on two stacks so far. Pretty reasonable for the storage game, I would say. And very good. Yeah. Sometimes you can get very unlucky and just never find the camp that you want, but a couple of rip scuttles and he did all right for himself. Got it. Mm -hmm. Plus 17, plus two. Up six minions in the laning phase so far, and Counter Logic Gaming have stopped pressuring the top lane. They sent the dual lane back down to the bot side here. Stixay and Aphrobu wanting the 2v2 Apollo and a special. Mm -hmm. They'd love to, and I also think that. When you put your Lucian, he has the first blood. I mean, just look at the item discrepancy between these two AD carries. Uh, put him in an already advantageous matchup. Send your jungler down there. You have the ultimate uh, from TF who can rotate down, and it's an Infernal Dragon. Push up, get pressure, get vision control, take the Infernal Drake. That should be CLG's next goal. 
see if they can get that right now. Looking for a play on the top side is uh, Darshan does a bit of a battle with Ray, but we just saw that Kindred is coming in from behind. So be careful, Trundle. There is a Kindred here. Even though Ray is low on health, Darshan is running out of teammates, who he is sixth though, but teleport is available from Keen. Which side of the map is going to be happening? It's a flash and a summoner teleport burn. There will be no CC to keep Darshan down, but that is him burning two five minute long cooldowns to not die. It also means, you know, talking about the dragon, that now it's TP priority here on Ray, so it makes it a lot harder for them to actually go for that Infernal Drake, which they'd love to do. I definitely agree. Now we're seeing the play for the mid lane here. Alistair, uh-oh, suddenly it's everyone there. Smithy lands a stun on Akeen as well, but look at the attack move and the, the CC on to who he was getting really blown up right now. Not a 400 health ignite is on. He's going to go down. A nice turnaround by Apex. That turret dive fails miserably. Some serious disrespect by CLG there. You know, we just talked about it. Darshan Blue is TP. Ray TP's in. They get absolutely shut down on that. Not even close to getting Keen uh, to even half HP. And now it's kind of like getting run away from their own jungle. Nice. 6A picks up the big one. But Smithy's got to be real careful. He's low, low, low on health. Trip can't quite get the damage. Gets rooted up. But look at that. A flash combo in for special to set up Afro. He did not see that coming. And suddenly, Bullseye. For Apex, now a stun and array though, he gets taken out as what well. Cocoon from Smith. Several, yeah, sick cocoon, but several oversets by varying members. Long term, that's two to one to Apex. Pretty sloppy start from, from both sides, honestly. Uh, some some definite over chasing there, but one thing to note, Shrimp has actually pulled out a massive advantage for himself, already up two levels over Smithy. A lot of CS as well, uh, so it's a pretty big deal. And Smithy, once again, it's gotta be frustrating for Shrimp. Two times in a row, he's had him within one shot of dying. If that E auto goes off, he kills him. Uh, but now the nice flash knock in for a free kill there onto Aphromu. But we see Ray getting too aggressive. Yeah, that Smithy makes him pay. Super greedy. Good, good, definitely. Wastes the flash too. Great. And, and if he had flash, he's willing to flash. He could have flashed the cocoon itself. Yep. So just honestly, is several misplays stacked on top of each other. Darshan up two levels on Ray. And once again, Ray starts the game at somewhat of a deficit. Level wise, he's down. Gold wise, 500. I will also say though, this is a much tougher matchup to come back into. Sure, Ray can still have massive team fight impact, but as far as the 1v1, there's actually no point in the game where Echo matches up well against Trundle. Uh, as far as a straight 1v1, yes, obviously Darshan will get caught. Echo can still do a lot of stuff, uh, but this is going to be tougher for him to get that top lane advantage. Well, maybe the Rift Herald turns it around a little bit. It's something that Apex have gotten every single one of their games and tried quite hard to make sure they get it. Right now, it's not been the play so far. After me, level 5, especially the same. No ulties. For the Alistair, Afro technically does have his. You caught yourself. Yep. I said ultis, and I was like, for the Alistair. There Plural somehow, ultimate. Well, because he can't ultimate multiple times. That's true, yeah. There you go. Never cast it yet. Still counts. Zero ultimates. So, who he uh, in the mid lane, farming it up, but Keen has caught up in farm. He's doing quite well for himself, and he's going to be building towards that Roa starting to scale up, and cast it in is always kind of that champion you got to worry about. Scaling and scaling and scaling, it just gets stronger and stronger, and he gets so scary in the late game. Trip, meanwhile, gonna pick up another bounty for himself. Pretty nice. Definitely is, and here we go. The play for Infernal Break, the first of the game. Apex, much more concerned with neutral objectives than Counter Logic Gaming has been. We get that one conveniently. Nice 8% ability power and attack damage gained by them. They're gonna trade turret though, and they're saying Darshan. Doesn't have TP, they don't even bother running him down. He's gonna be able to shove this wave in, and the, the lead that he's getting over Ray is, is pretty disgusting. So that is the trade that they're making. This is an almost 80 CS uh, Darshan on a Trundle in an advantageous matchup, building towards Ravenous Hydra. And it's gonna be a tough game for Ray if he ever has to match up. Oh, here we go, the play on the bot side though. Keen has already burned Riftlock, but he flashes not yet. Nah, he's not gonna be able to use it. Goes down, who he gets him with the card. And a kill comes through, that split push. Yeah, you don't want to put Keen up against the duo lane so that TF can then join you. You've got to be against TF in the first place. Super nice as well. None of them had to blow any summoners. Uh, Keen had hit, held his too. Uh, but there's a lot of playmaking ability on TF. He has the ghost, he has the flash. So even without his ultimate, there's definitely playmaking ability. And it's key for him to get rolling on this because he needs to get these ultimates out constantly. He needs to continue picking up side lane kills. And he really wants to get rolling. He's got a Dark Seal. He oh, picked yeah. that one up before the fight even started. So two stacks on him. Who he, if he gets really ahead and turns that into Majai's, he's got so much ability power to one-shot people with. I love the early Lucidity also. 
He has early lucidity, so not only is it 10% CDR, but importantly, it's summoner cooldown reduction. Especially when you have two combat summoners like the Ghost Flash, I think it's even better. And then in combination with the Sheen, he's already sitting at least 20% CDR, plus whatever he has in runes. He's going to have those ultimates quickly. He's going to have the summoners very quickly. Yep. I love it. He's on exactly 20 right now. And there you go. Yeah, he's definitely going to be scary. It is Thunderlords for that Twist of Fate, by the way. And, and Ray's going to... Oh, okay. Darshan just gives it up. And Darshan could actually decide to freeze if he really wants. And I think that's probably the the correct choice. But he, he yeah. may just try to push it out. I think I think with him walking back that way, I think it is... Nope. It's not a freeze. He's shoving it out. Yeah. But there's nothing to fight for. Yeah, Dragon's that's already what, off that's the map. Surprised. Yeah. Maybe they get Rift Herald. They could, they could decide to go for Rift Herald. And he may just want to try to continuously draw that pressure uh, as Keen is going to get poked away at there by CLG. But... You know, going to that tier two is, is a pretty dangerous position, even when you are that much stronger in the 1v1. Darshan, though, obviously feeling confident, and, you know, he's saying that his team can get advantages elsewhere on the map if he's able to draw them. And, and honestly, when he's this far ahead of Ray, eh, there is some potential of a 1v2. And it's him going for the, the, the flank, sort of. Level eight to level nine, still a bit of a lead for Darshan, trying to kite away, not get stunned up. He won't. Pillar kind of misses, though. Doesn't do that much to Ray, but still going for the battle. And chunks that poor Echo down below one third. Darshan did pop his ulti for that. That's a cooldown missing. Mm -hmm. But Darshan's going to be sitting at full HP, and Ray is not. So we are going to see which dragon is coming up next, and it will be another Infernal. So that is something to keep in mind. Mm -hmm. You don't want to give away two of those fire drakes in a row. It's definitely a, a scary situation. So look for CLG to contest this, and they're pushing in bot lane. You know, looking to try to get more turrets, pick up more global gold, and, and try to carve themselves out a bigger advantage. Definitely are. Right now, though, 14 minutes into this game, it's CLG up 2,500, but Apex has come back from worse, certainly. Darshan again looking for the battle under rain. This time, Twist of Fate will join with the gold card locked. He dodges it, but Ray now getting a teleport join as well from Keen, and they turn right back in. Darshan nearly dead already, but who he gets the kill first. Better Lord's up that with that one. Darshan TPs to leave, and who he now running for dear life, but Keen still takes him out. A one for one, both mid laners getting kills. Such a nice play, though, by Ray. Uh, actually using the Echo Ultimate, immuning that Gold card, allowed them to get the even trade in that. Actually, you know, kind of an advantageous trade because we saw the TP and the Flash both blown there by Darshan, as well as both summoners from who he and his ultimate. So they get the summoner advantage, they get the trade. Pretty good. Yeah, four summoners to three. The overall trade, CLG burned all four. Keen burned two, and Ray burned one. Uh, but yeah, still, I think it's, it's at least it's Ray getting a physical to And just watch this. This is so good from Ray. You know, he's doing the best with a, with a bad situation. And look at that. Right there. He ultimates back, immunes the gold card stun, and he is going to be able to just allow his team to have enough time, who he thankfully does finish off one kill there to make it an even trade. And you can see in the picture of picture, working way at that Rift Herald, but it's looking like CLG is going to abandon ship as its special ward's over. They don't want to risk the rest of the fight. Counter Logic Gaming up still two turrets to one. They've done a good job making all of that happen so far. As Apex never managed to knock down the bottom turret during the lane swap games. Once again, the play on the side lane, CLG actually using. Uh, it's interesting because it's not the sort of the normal 1 3 1. It's actually Stixay and Aphrodite being sent to a side lane, looking for one of those teleport users, and then having TF join them more often yeah. than not. And it's, it's a new take. I actually think it's a very good take. I think it's working out quite well for them. But it's TF actually holding the mid lane much longer than you'd normally see mid laners do. Mm -hmm. You know, worth noting though, with all that CDR, he almost has his ultimate once again. So the next time, Keen will not be able to match him. Obviously, the teleport is a much longer cooldown than that TF ult. Uh, so, you know, CLG can continue to push up, continue to get pressure, try to find someone uh, in one of those spots that they can take them out. We'll see if they're able to find those people right here. Smithy takes down the big Razor Beak. Is he takes the smaller ones and gets more gold out of his passive for it. Good allocation of resources. It's kind of the right way to do it. Here's the concave of traps there for Apollo, but CLG able to kite around them and deal very slight damage to that mid lane turret. Next dragon's up in 20 seconds, and it was a TP advantage for Ray over Darshan, but vice versa for Huhi over Keen. We'll see, you know, what CLG is going to do because. If, if they don't move Darshan down, I think it's it's not something that they really can contest at all. And to give up two of these ooh. fire drakes, ooh, that's a nice little steal away. Yep, Sixa gets it. Shrimp was not willing to use Smite at the time, and means that that goes over. And CLG gets vision of the area. Darshan is in a split against Ray again. Teleport advantage for the Apex top laner. That Echo. We'll see if anything else gets done 
40 CS lead still for Darshan, up two levels at this time. Who he was seeing if he wants to go for, and he Here does now on to Ray. How much can he dodge? He gets a little bit away, but he's definitely gonna die for this one. A couple more auto attacks will do it. Who he gets another kill for himself. Darshan survives, and now it's up to the rest of CLG to not die to the push in for Apex. Six A running for dear life. They say you to the summoners. They're they got go away. Him. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're gonna feed him. Base. So Infernal Drake number two versus a kill, a top lane tier two, and maybe more. Smithy, can he get zoned down? He wants it, he gets the steal. Just kidding. CLG getting everything they want. They have their cake, they eat it too. Apex have to run away and be sad. How does he do it time and time again? Smithy has got to be the most consistent smiter in the league. He steals so many objectives and it's massive for CLG. As you said, they get the top lane turret, they get the kill, and to keep that Infernal Drake away from Apex is massive. It would have been a 16% ADAP yeah. uh, bonus for these people that are gonna be stacking it, so huge. Next one up's gonna be Mountain Drake, by the way, so it'll be uh, plenty of pushing power afterwards, and if Celia's gonna keep getting these Drakes now, I think they can keep driving with them. Kind of logic game, and got a lot out of that. Their gold lead now 4,000, and this has got to feel good. Who he? Once again, will be the one to take up the mid lane. And this time around, Honestly, I'm, I'm much happier to see Counterlogic Gaming play a more proactive team comp. Mm. I think that's always been one of the big strengths of CLG is that they, I mean, they just are a more proactive team than Apex. And not letting them sit around, letting Apex sit around and farm and catch Ray back up, because Apex don't make that, like, that many big choices themselves. I think this actually plays in a CLG's favor. And this type of comp, I think, is much better for them. Yeah, Hui has been doing a great job so far you know, opening up the side lanes, being able to TP and aggressively looking for those plays nonstop. I mean, Ray is, is doing the best that he possibly can uh, when he is coming in. He's dodging all the gold cards. He's doing great with that, but he's still going to go down. Yeah. 2v1, but you're down two levels. Not exactly easy. Still level 10 for Ray. And he's been getting solo farm for as much of the game as they've been able to give it to him. And here we go. Rift Herald going to be started up just before it'll despawn. Since it's in combat, it'll despawn at 1955. And that's more than enough time for Counter-Logic Gaming. They will get this one over. And it'll be Darshan carrying it for maybe even the entire duration of the remaining game here. Yeah, he's going to have it to, you know, close to 40 minutes into the game. Yep. So, yeah. you're just taking a super advantageous matchup. You're camping the guy super hard, making it even worse. And now you're giving him Rift Herald. So, yeah. I feel bad for Ray, honestly. It's tough. Uh, but Ray is going to have to depend on the rest of his team to carve out those advantages for themselves. You know, the scaling Caitlyn, uh, the scaling of his jungler and his mid laner. They have a lot of late game team fight power, and Ray is going to have to put the faith in them as they have put the faith in him. Yeah. If Ray comes back from this and carries the game, he's like automatic MVP of the league. Like, there's not even a vote anymore. Oh, yeah, it's just like, Ray's the best player. It's one, all over. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've decided. So. I watched four games. It's, yeah. it, there's nothing to change my mind. Uh, so we'll see. I mean,. We keep stacking the odds against him. Darshan is on the hunt. Aw, oh, misses the E, though. Ray hops over it. Not a big problem for him. And now it's time for the mid lane siege. Kind of logic gaming. Well, they've tied the Infernal Drakes, so no advantage there for Apex. And, well, Lucian still has more power to go, honestly. He's got the Yomus, but the Cleaver's not far behind. That'll grow him even farther. And it's not until three items that Caitlyn gets ahead of him. Uh, and look at all these Apex members moving up towards the top side of the map. But there's really good warding uh, for CLG, so they cannot see through the river. It's hard for them to really uh, kind of surprise Darshan. So meanwhile, CLG is going to be pushing hard in the bot lane. And Apex is not like, prepared for this. They could actually get a lot of damage in on this turret, if not just take it down. And they're looking at it right now. There we go. Turret taking plenty of damage. Yeah, nice-ish wave clear from Keen. But guess what? You got Cocoon, you've got to give him some respect. Not quite enough damage dealt though, the wave gets cleared out, and now Shrimp is looking for a bit of vengeance. Smithy pushed around. Apex do hold on to the turret. Yep, they get the poke in, they're not able to take it out as, as Keen was there pretty quickly, but it's down around half or one third, and look at top lane turret. Darshan's just gonna ignore him, and this turret's gonna be going down, and Ray's not gonna be able to win the fight afterwards. And this could be a hip. Twisted Fate to join, Ray is pillared off, and Huhi just goes for inhibitor damage right now. A Little bit of poke down into Ray, but careful, because here comes the flank Shrimp, and Apollo already coming in. 3v2, CLG ghosting to run away. Bot lane tier 2 went down as well, by the way. So Counter Logic have knocked down two turrets in the last 12 seconds here. This and have been brilliant. crushing the map. They're just peeling them apart. And Apex just, they do not have the pieces in play to actually answer this. Really good stuff by CLG. To see it, just a very different game. And just because I like seeing game threes, I'm, I'm okay with CLG winning this one. Just we get to watch them battle again. And I would expect if, if CLG closes the game out in the next five minutes, that Apex changes their bands up heavily. Maybe gets rid of all the early game tools that CLG were going to use. Get rid of the TF, get rid of the Lucian. 
Yeah, you'd expect so. And 40% CDR on Huhi now. He's going to have that ultimate up every minute and a half. So uh, that is going to be a constant threat. They're always going to have to be worried. And when you have such a heavy split pushing team with the trundle, with the TF, unlocking the base is key to winning. It's so massive because there's always the threat that Huhi just says, oh, we're losing this fight. All right, I'm going to ult into your base. I'm going to take your inhibitor. Yeah, so true. it's it's really, really frustrating because you always have to be aware of that. You always have to have someone back there, someone ready to deal with it. And when you're a team fighting comp like Apex, you just want to group, you want to fight them, but they're not going to let you fight them. They're going to backdoor, they're going to split push, they're going to control the waves. And it's something that you, it's just like all this maintenance work you constantly have to do that can get really, really frustrating. And when you make one mistake, you lose an inhibitor turret like that. You make another yep. mistake, you lose an inhibitor. Exactly. You forget the maintenance work. You got a rusty valve. Well, CLG pops it right open. Suddenly you've got a flood of minions into your base. It's just <laughs> the metaphor works better than you might have thought it would. It came to me just in the middle of the sentence. It was nice. Beautiful. Thanks, man. 6,000, 5,000. Yeah, 6,000 the gold league, Counterlogic Gaming. Some of that, yeah, it's supposed to fade, but it's them really playing a wonderful game right here. If Apex can find a matchup Ooh. that actually goes equal without getting sort of backdoored by TF, they can start slowing the tide here, right? They can, you know, have Apollo just hold the mid lane. Don't let Huhi walk first. They can try to have, if Ray ever catches up the Darshan, like that can stop being a pressure point. But look where CLG have sent Stixe. He's farther to the right than the rest of Apex are. He's inside the base right now. And now has to run away from Keen. Actually chunked down to two thirds. He's got to give Keen some respect. And Keen gives him some respect. He's saying, oh, this guy's not going to be here without his team. And he actually probably could have killed him if he wanted to chase for that. Uh, but he assumed that Smithy would be closer. He assumed that Aphromoon would be right there. Uh, so he's not going to go for it. And Darshan, once again, just going to ignore Ray, start working away on that turret. Uh oh, this time around, who he was over today. I don't think he saw what was going on, but it looked like a flash cover from Expecial. Flash pull right, headbutt into the turret, knock him down right there. Darshan now in a battle against Ray, but Ray running the other way, running him down the map, and actually getting a lot done with this one, despite the Rift Hero, despite the Gold, despite being down 34 minions. Yeah, he's but... bringing in reinforcements. Darshan is big. He's flashing for a teleport play, and he will just barely oh. get out and survive. Darshan playing with fire, but and still losing some. He kind of a mistake there, honestly. Using the Q, he could have canceled the teleport with it. Uh, so a big greedy to actually just Q right on the entrance there. The only way for Darshan to escape, he's shown it multiple times this game, is the TP. On Cassidy, you got to hold the Q that interrupts it. Yeah, it does interrupt channels. It doesn't sound, but it will stop you from channeling things like the teleport. So yeah, yeah just to, mistake. to clarify the mechanic for anyone who didn't know about the Cassidy and Q, and that's, yeah, mistake from Keen, as you mentioned. Mid lane pressure, an attempt for a stun, but no one picked off. CLG managed to just lose the one member and nothing else except summoner spells. And they're right on top of this dragon now. And it's Mountain Drake, which at this time, when you're controlling the map this much, I feel like is actually the best thing for them. It's definitely going to be a big one because we're pushing unlocks the objectives, unlocks you know, turret damage. Uh, it, you can draw pressure and actually uh, get damage in on Baron, but now we're going to see uh, how Hui and Hui actually... Oh, he ate a trap oh, hit. Man. That is, uh, that's rough. Uh, who he just kind of walked up onto the onto the turret, stood on a trap, and he yep. just he just wasn't paying attention, I guess. Yeah, didn't see the trap was there. And then special, I believe, headbutt to flash pulverize, or maybe it was flash to headbutt pulverize. But either way, caught up to him in time. Turret died anyway. Mid lane outer's dead, so uh, he might have. Yeah, either way, kill had come through. The turret eventually did die. Slightly early on the queue, Apollo, but he's gonna get that red buff. No big problem. Now it's looking like next step here for CLG. Uh, they're kind of milling around the Barons. They'll probably want to start to get vision, see how many players Darshan can actually draw a bot, uh, and then try to try to bait this. You know, if you can get, especially if you get Raid and TP, that would be big. Uh, but here it comes. Teleport flank coming in. They want to knock down X50, but he got the Rift Scuttle movement speed, which got him far enough away. And Darshan's going to ignore everybody. Darshan's yeah. going to be going straight for the inhibitor, and they have to, have to worry about this. Uh, Apex needs to get something. Smithy's in a bad spot. I think he's likely to die here, but he's trying to juke everybody around. <laughs> repels up, repels down, but yes, they're on top of him. He's going to drop now. That is a kill picked up. Darshan's going to be on Apex. the inhibitor shortly, though, yep. and we have the tier two mid lane is actually being cracked as well here by TF. This is what we're talking about. You have to deal with it. Now Apex is, they don't know what to do. They, they're going to start up the Baron, but they could just lose their base. And they're going to lose a lot of this right now. That bottom inhibitor is certainly going to be going down without any answer. And now CLG looking to make a, what, three versus four play. Darshan 
why did Keen even show up? He's not going to do anything. And look at how little health they have. Apex, this in a, in a terrible world of shot calling, going to lose maybe someone to Baron. No, Baron does get taken down. Shrimp gets it, but now Catalogic Gaming wanted They're to re-engage. They're going for the Nexus. Onto Ray, onto a special, looking for more to get done. The turret's already been destroyed. Look at Catalogic Gaming just knocking down buildings here in this one. Expecial did eventually fall. His flash was down. CLG got several turrets, an inhibitor, a couple of kills at cost of Baron. Yeah, they get a Nexus turret as well, and, and thankfully for Apex, they did secure that bear because if they didn't have the Baron recall, uh, CLG could have gone for the end. But either way, you know, they have only one Nexus turret remaining. Uh, this is a split push threat. This is what I'm talking about. You have to be so precise, so quick when you do make the call to go for these kills, to go for these plays. Ray TP's in. They have to know that Darshan is unlocked now. They have to deal with that at some point. So you have to get a kill right away and get back to dealing with them if you're not going to leave someone in the 1v1. But they just honestly don't have anyone who can 1v1 it right now. And it's just putting them in these lose-lose situations. Great, they got a kill. They got the Baron. That's the best of still a bad situation where you lost an inhibitor turret, an inhibitor, your mid lane turret, and a Nexus turret. Yeah, that's a lot of things to lose, and they only traded a kill for one. So, counter Logic Gaming, 7,000 now. Their lead with an open base ready for them when they ch decide to push in. Smithy just buying some time, letting mid lane stay afloat. As Ray and Apollo tried to battle him. But now the shield comes in from Aphromu. A combo by Special means actually a hell of a lot. Oh my god, he's already dead. There's a nice pickup by Apollo. Ray takes the turret and walks out. A nice setup there, a good kill on Aphromu. That's going to be in the outer turret. Yeah, great combo from a Special. A great follow up from Apollo. Drops the trap right on him. Pops Aphromu like he was nothing. That was. I didn't think he was going to die. And then suddenly a trap showed up as his feet and he was gone. Keen now looking for the flank. There's a banner of command minion somewhere from Aphromu. But mid lane tier two is now also gone. That's two turrets and a kill picked up. Apex, again, wearing the Baron buff despite a gold deficit, trying to get a lot done here. Look at the damage up that they've got. And it's going to be another combo in towards Huhi. Look at the damage up. But Force of Flash away. Special taking some of the damage. Lambs fight will heal the team they are back low, up. Though. This could be bad. Six days going deep. How much can they really get done though? Apollo Loba still alive. One kill picked up onto the Alistar. Another one on the back line as the AD carry drops two so far for CLG. A double as a third kill is been dropped and shrimp now forced to run but darshan is teleporting to join his minions on the right side of the map shrimp actually the only man alive right now Look as the clg timers. wants to win the game yeah 30 seconds many of the respawn timers here shrimp gets the empowered recall he does bring it back to safety he can buff up that wave of minions spawning right now darshan i don't think they can get stop the it i don't think they can stop darshan he has super minions coming in well oh, he's this... gonna take a lot of damage from shrimp though there's the wave of, as well of buffed up bear minions there's two waves right there battling six eight gets what damage he can Special is back alive and there's only 10 seconds to go until apollo's here i think it only means the middle turret and inhibitor but i think clg might have to leave They're after go for this top. Uh, They're gonna triple you're right no turret there makes it even easier but keep in mind the respawns are coming in. Keen can flank and Ray can run really fast. This is a small bit of a risk. A special goes in, finds the stun. Darshan nearly goes down, but they get a special first. And it's not quite the extra damage. They finally get the kill. Support for top laner. But again, triple and him is definitely a big deal. And there is the Keen flank. He wants in, gets some damage, but Zonia's keeps who he alive. Cocoon is there and Keen goes down. A bad flank actually betrays himself. Yeah, Apex lose two for one. Keen, you know, he saw the low health bars. He wanted to finish them off, but he used his Zonias in that mid lane fight uh, where Six A actually took him out. And Six A, you know, came up huge for the team. He actually dives deep in this mid lane fight, and and you'll see it's the overcommittal here. They're going in. They want to try to really punish here. They know they've been behind. This is their chance to team fight, but unfortunately, it's not going to work out. And it's right here. You'll see Six A following Apollo. He tracks him down. He's going to go now onto Keen. He's able to take out both the AD carry and the mid laner here. Massive play, barely able to do it from Stix A. And that not only unlocked uh, this play, it unlocked the next play where they're able to take out Keen because he forced his Onyas. Definitely huge stuff right there. So 9,000 gold lead now. Counterlogic Gaming, want to verify something real quick. As uh, it is CLG by the one who are wearing the two dragon buffs. Apex are not the one at the Mountain Drake. Uh, just to clarify the scoreboard up there, but I don't believe Apex have gotten any more than the one Infernal yeah. for themselves. And Stixie is a big boy, 5-0-4. He is thousands of gold ahead of Caitlyn. Uh, he's over 3k up right now. Yeah, the, uh, he's even got the, uh, the rapid oh. fire cannon to make sure the damage comes through really conveniently. And this is going to be the attempt at a death knell push counter logic gaming. Thank you, scoreboard, for fixing that one up there. And now looking for the top lane. 
minions to come in. There's so many supers there. The one Nexus turret remains between Counter Logic Gaming and Victory Wide, and it close this one out and make it go to a game three. Special pop, CLT pillar back around. Ulti's pop to try to keep the teams alive, but it's CLG who are just simply unstoppable. The turret is down. They're going to go for the fight first, get the fantasy points, get the kills, and get themselves a secure victory. Three kills picked up without even blinking an eye, and it's going to be the game two win. CLG take care of business, working overtime and making it a game three. Yeah, fantastic stuff from CLG across the board. The whole team pitching in. I mean, so much of the focus was on top lane with Darshan and who he really getting a lot of work done up there. But you have to give a lot of credit to the bot lane as well. Both of them with 12 out of 15 kill participation, 705 for 6A, 0, 2, and 12 for uh, Darshan. This was a full team effort. And, you know, even Smithy, another <laughs> Dragon Steel, uh, just so, so good. Yeah, really, really, definitely incredible stuff. I wonder if the game would have changed much if the second Infernal had gone over to Apex. It would have been a swing of 8% stats. Yeah. Uh, it would have made some impact, certainly in some of these fights. You had some really close ones. Yeah, like, look, look at that five. last fight, right? right? Like, 6A lives with a sliver of health. Yeah. He would have actually not been able to kill and would have died, right? These are things that can actually make a massive difference going yeah. forward. So um, you can't overlook how big that Dragon Steel was. Certainly. Yeah, I think it definitely played a factor in some of the fights here, and it would have been, I think, closer without it. Either way, those CLG really revamping their strategy and saying we're going to play a split push focus game. We're going to rely on who he getting over to these side lanes. You're going to stay mid. If the dual lane finds like Keen by himself, sick, killed that. We have a 1v1 with, with Darshan over against Ray. Let's get over to there instead and crush that guy.